Ever since the beginning of Dragon Ball, the Flying Nimbus has been a very helpful form of transportation for Goku and his family, but are they the only ones who have ridden it? Although it's primarily been written by Goku, the Flying Nimbus, also known as the Kinto Un, has been written by several other characters within the Dragon Ball series. In order to ride Nimbus though, one must have a pure heart, and surprisingly, there are quite a few people who have been able to sit atop this yellow cloud. So in today's video, I wanted to list all of the currently known riders of the Flying Nimbus. With that being said, make sure you all sit back and enjoy this fun discussion, hopefully learning a few new things along the way. So without any further ado, let's get started. In a topic like this, it would be a major crime to leave out the Flying Nimbus' as most iconic owner. First obtaining the Flying Nimbus from Master Roshi, Goku would use this magical cloud as his main form of travel alongside Bulma and the remainder of his friends on their many adventures. As Goku grew older and learned how to fly, the Flying Nimbus became more of a helpful alternative that let him conserve energy while still allowing him to travel at high speeds. Despite being used throughout the entirety of the original Dragon Ball, the Flying Nimbus began making lesser amounts of appearances once Dragon Ball Z started, yet still helped Goku out during the events of the Saiyan Saga before being pushed into the background once characters mastered flight and began traveling at higher speeds than the Nimbus could travel. However, Goku has always cherished the Flying Nimbus and looked at it as a very close friend of his who saved his life and others on multiple occasions, so he would later pass the cloud down onto his sons, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Although we haven't ever seen him ride the Flying Nimbus in person, Master Roshi was the very first person on page to be in possession of the Magical Cloud that was given to him by his old mentor, Korin. It's inferred that at one point, most likely in his younger age, Roshi had a pure heart and was capable of flying on Nimbus, but as he grew older and more perverted, he became impure and was unable to ride it from then on. So, the only logical thing that Roshi could do after that point was give it to Goku after their first meeting when the boy returned Turtle to him, foreshadowing the teacher-student dynamic between the two of them that he and Korin once shared. It's never mentioned if Korin himself is capable of riding the Magical Cloud like his student, however I wouldn't rule out the idea of him being capable of it considering that he has possession of the enormous Nimbus that gave Goku his second flying Nimbus after the original was destroyed by Tambourine. Maybe that's a discussion for another day. Considering that he never lost his pure heart, Goku has always been capable of riding the Nimbus Cloud and has even passed on the purity of his heart to his sons. Because of this, the Nimbus Cloud has served as a family heirloom for the Sun family once Gohan was born. Like I mentioned earlier, Goku still used the Flying Nimbus during the Saiyan Saga and very briefly at the beginning of the Namek Saga, but after those two arcs, Nimbus simply couldn't keep up with flight speed and instant transmission. We didn't see Nimbus again until the Great Saiyaman Saga when Gohan, who we've seen be able to ride it as a young child time and time again, became the new owner of the cloud after his father's sacrifice in the Cell games. Using it to travel to and from school, Gohan eventually gave Nimbus to Goten, who we've only seen ride it in filler material, and although we don't see him or Gohan flying it too often, Nimbus has proven itself to be quite useful during peaceful times for the Sun family. Goku's wife, Chi-Chi, also possessed a pure heart, and she was actually the second character shown being capable of riding the flying Nimbus alongside Goku. Chi-Chi was still capable of riding Nimbus as an adult, however this was prior to Gohan's birth, so I can only hope that whenever she and Goten appear in the future, they utilize Nimbus more often whenever we get those slice of life moments. With those main five riders of the Flying Nimbus that we already know about out of the way, it's time to dive into lesser known characters, which is the real reason why you're all here. You guys remember Launch? Just like Toriyama, some of you may have forgotten her, but something that can't ever be forgotten is the fact that Launch is capable of riding the Flying Nimbus. Well, at least she can while in her blue-haired good personality, as we've seen Goku and Krillin bring her back to Roshi's Island on the cloud. We aren't sure if Launch can ride Nimbus while in her blonde-haired bad attitude state, but either way, Launch has been shown riding it without holding on to Goku. Not only have we seen Launch ride alongside Goku and Krill on the Kami Island, but Goku has also brought two other pure-hearted women back with him to fulfill Roshi's desires for younger women. The first of which is a very large, muscular woman who I can only assume took up most of the room on Nimbus, and a mermaid who attacked Roshi for trying to charm her. Now before I move on, let me just say that Krillin is not anywhere on this list, and I'm just mentioning him to explain what happens to impure riders. The only reason why he and Goku were able to ride Nimbus together is because Krillin was forced to hang on to his pal. Because he's impure, Krillin would simply fall through the flying Nimbus, but was still capable of flying with it as long as he was holding on to the person riding it, if that makes any sense. I'm not sure if the muscular woman made it to Kami Island this way, or if she was actually pure of heart, but I'm sure we all would like to believe that she was. 
Now, while this may be entirely from filler, Nom's character possessing a pure heart and being capable of riding the flying Nimbus is completely believable. In episode 29 of Dragon Ball, Nom gets snatched up by a huge pterodactyl during his search for the roaming lake, so Goku flies in to whack the beast out of the sky with his power pole. Catching Nom on the flying Nimbus, Goku decides to help him in his search for the flying lake, and while the episode is a really good watch, it's a shame we never got to see Nom ride the Nimbus in the manga. I would have loved him being one of the canon riders, especially since the next person I talk about is one of those canon riders. Yeah, that's right, Aureli and the Gachans are capable of riding the Flying Nimbus. It happened in the manga, so it's canon. For those of you that don't know, Aureli is the protagonist of Toriyama's Dr. Slump franchise, a series that was created prior to Dragon Ball, and even though we've seen Goku and Aureli cross paths later on in Dragon Ball Super, she made her first Dragon Ball appearance here in the General Blue Saga. There's not really anything special about Aureli's ride on the Nimbus Cloud, as she just asked Goku if she and the Gachans could ride it while he searched for the Dragon Balls. It's just as simple as that. It's no surprise that Aureli and the Gachans are capable of riding the Nimbus because, I mean, look at them. You don't think they're pure-hearted? Now, while Nam and Aureli have both ridden the Flying Nimbus once as a result of a filler episode and crossover shenanigans, Upa is one of the lesser-known characters who was seen riding Nimbus on several occasions. For those of you that don't remember Upa, the son of Bora, he was part of the tribe that resided underneath Korin's tower. With their tribe being victim to the Red Ribbon Army's searches for their Dragon Ball, Upa came into conflict with both Captain Yellow and Mercenary Tau, but was aided by Goku on both occasions. Upa gets saved by Goku from Mercenary Tau before he smacks into the side of Korin's tower, and we see him floating on top of the Nimbus Cloud, showing that he has a pure heart. Not only that, but later on we would see Upa ride alongside Goku on top of the flying Nimbus while on his search for the Dragon Balls that they would use to revive Bora after Tau killed him. Although we don't get to see Upa ride Nimbus all that much, he is one of the more common riders of the cloud, as most people who have ridden it have only ridden it once. Oob. He's the pure-hearted reincarnation of Kid Buu brought about by King Yemma after overhearing Goku's wish to fight him as a good guy one day. Being raised in a small village on a tropical island, Oob went about his daily life with no knowledge about his previous life, nor did he have any connection to it until he met Goku during the 28th World Martial Arts Tournament. We all know the story of Goku and Oob, where the Saiyan tests Oob's strength and takes him under his wing as a student, only to fly off to train, leaving his friends and family behind. Originally, we just see Goku carry Oob on his back as the two leave, but with the Kanzenban reissues drawn by Akira Toriyama later on, we see Goku grant Oob the usage of the Flying Nimbus. Being pure of heart, Oob is able to sit on top of the Flying Nimbus, and he carefully rides it away as we, the reader, see the resemblance between him and Kid Goku, with the latter now being the teacher of the next generation. With Goku giving his cloud to Oob in a manner similar to how Roshi gave him his first Nimbus cloud like his mentor before him, the cycle of the student becoming the master continues. Now, we may have covered every major character who has ridden the flying Nimbus in both canon and non-canon material, but don't worry, the video isn't over just yet. There are several other characters that we've seen flying on top of Nimbus in material that isn't exactly canon, but was displayed by Toriyama and several other writers at one point or another. I like to refer to these characters as quote-unquote parody writers, as I can't really think of anything else to call them. The most popular parody writer no doubt has to be Nico Majin Z, who was the protagonist of Toriyama's one-shot manga series Nico Majin. Being the student of Goku, Nico Majin Z wears a gi similar to that of his masters, and is even capable of riding both the Flying Nimbus in Nico Majin Z 3 and the Dark Nimbus as seen on the cover of Nico Majin Z 5. Another parody writer is Otokosuki, the flamboyant man who appears towards the end of Dragon Ball Z. Although we don't officially see him ride Nimbus in Z, we do get to see him be one of the people Goku brings back with him to Kami Island, Feroshi in Dragon Ball SD which is a spin-off manga written by Naho Oishi that simplifies and parodies the plot of Dragon Ball for younger audiences. Like Muscular Lady, we don't know if he held on to Goku or not, but it's a parody, so come on. Finally, who could ever forget the time that Gohan and Krillin encountered Goku in Captain Ginyu's battered body after his body change technique? Even though Ginyu never physically rides Flying Nimbus, a horrified Gohan imagines Ginyu Goku riding on top of the Flying Nimbus and then sitting down for dinner with him and his mom. After a category like parody writers, what's next? There are a few more characters that have been seen riding the Flying Nimbus, but only in specific video games. The first character that I would like to mention is a character that actually appears in canon Dragon Ball lore. Kid Trunks, although never being shown capable of riding Nimbus in canon lore, has been seen riding it alongside Goten in the main menu for Budokai Tenkaichi 3. Considering Goten himself doesn't even ride the Nimbus cloud all that much, seeing the two of them ride it together is a real treat. The next character is exclusive to a video game entitled Famicom Jump Hero Retsuden, a game that came out in 1988 on the NES. 
Famicom Jump was a RPG game that celebrated Shonen Jump's 20th anniversary by crossing over several of the franchises published within the magazine. While characters appeared from their own respective franchises, the nameless protagonist of the game, to my knowledge at least, can utilize items from these different franchises in his arsenal, and the flying Nimbus is one of them. Nimbus is sort of used like the bicycle from Pokemon, increasing the speed of movement for the character. Finally, we have the Earthling Race Hero from Xenoverse 2. While Saiyans could transform into Super Saiyans, and Namekians could transform into Great Namekians, Earthlings seem to be out of luck in terms of the transformation department. However, with the introduction of the Power Pole Pro transformation, anyone's OC could utilize the Power Pole in combat, and could fly on top of the Nimbus Cloud. Earlier I mentioned Aurelia as a crossover rider for the Flying Nimbus, however she is one of Toriyama's creations, and actually rides the cloud in the Dragon Ball manga, but aside from Aurelia, there are a few other characters along with actual people who have crossed over with Dragon Ball who have ridden the Flying Nimbus. Monkey D. Luffy is arguably the most important crossover character that isn't one of Toriyama's creations, that just so happened to ride the Flying Nimbus cloud. If you've paid attention throughout the entire video, you may notice that the Flying Nimbus likes to catch people out of the sky and save them from falling, so Luffy is no different as we see him get saved in the Crossy Posh manga, and we see him ride Nimbus in Kyutai Panic, Adventure Returns. Tony Tony Chopper, or simply Chopper, is another One Piece character that has been shown riding the Flying Nimbus. He's shown briefly in the ending scene for Battle Stadium D.O.N. flying alongside Vegeta and Trunks, and he also stars in one of the eye catches for the Dream 9 crossover between Dragon Ball, One Piece, and Toriko, where he flies alongside Kid Gohan on the Nimbus Cloud. Now the last person to cross over with Dragon Ball is Masahiro Miyaki, a Fuji TV announcer. Masahiro is the first and only real life person thus far who has been shown riding the Flying Nimbus after crossing into the world of Dragon Ball. He's shown commenting alongside Goku during a segment in a 2007 TV program called Nippon Ijin Taisho, which is actually pretty entertaining. Not to mention the animation style has a very similar style to Shintani's current style from Dragon Ball Super Broly. There we have it everyone, those are all the currently known riders from Dragon Ball and those who have crossed over with it, who have ridden the Flying Nimbus. Even if it was only a one-time thing, there are still lots of characters who have been capable of riding the Nimbus Cloud, and I'm sure there will be plenty more in the near future. Who would you want to see ride the Flying Nimbus if they were given the chance? Let me know down in the comments below as I would love to hear your thoughts. If you're interested in my Dragon Ball content or just my videos in general, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you want to stay up to date on all my Dragon Ball news and updates, as I always try to keep you guys in the loop. Make sure to stick around for my next video, but until then, see you later.